In this video, I'd like to take a look at Luminar and its applicability for editing infrared photos. So here I have a color infrared photo shot with a 590 nanometer filter, and let's take a look at it in Luminar. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to set a white balance, and you'll notice immediately that uh, I don't have any uh, presets available for daylight or cloudy, and I don't have a Kelvin reading, I just have this uh, uh, the kind of a simple temperature and tint option that you would get if you are working with a JPEG. And this is kind of the first challenge that you have with Luminar, uh, because even though this was shot as raw, uh, there's a bug in Luminar that prevents it from being read uh, as a raw file. Let me show you an example. So if I switch over to this regular color uh, photograph, uh, you can see here that uh, this is a DNG as well. Uh, because it was previously converted as a DNG and that it has been identified as a raw. And I've tested this with both DNG files and with uh, native uh, raw files that have not been converted to DNGs. And with a uh, regular color uh, raw file, uh, the, the program will identify this as a raw file. And once it does, you get these uh, normal settings that you would and also you get a full range uh, temperature slider that goes from 2000 Kelvin up to 25,000 Kelvin, which is actually uh, not as good as 50, but still a pretty good range for editing uh, infrared photos. And then of course you have a color picker as well so that you could, uh, you know, pick your, pick your white if you wanted to do that. So this is what uh, the image would look like uh, for a, a raw image. Now let's take a look at a, a, a JPEG image and, and see what the results are. So here's a JPEG image, and as you see when I load this up, the raw symbol does not appear because Luminar has correctly detected that this is not a raw file. Uh, and so I get the, the limited choices for white balance, and then I just get the temperature and tint sliders. So now looking back at our original infrared photo, we can see that Luminar has not detected that it's a raw file and we have limited choices. I reported this bug to Skylum, the makers of Luminar, back in November of 2019 and they acknowledged and were able to confirm that the bug exists. That was in version 3 of Luminar, we're up to version 4.2, but the unfortunately the issue still has not been addressed yet. Well, let's move ahead and see what we can do with this photo. So the first thing we want to do is try to set a white balance, so I will set a white balance on the clouds that gives me a little bit of separation of, of the the sky color from the ground but definitely not as much as I would get from another program so now that I've got that set the next thing I want to do is uh, do a channel mixer or inversion of some type to make that happen uh, so I'm going to go into uh, the layers and we'll add a new layer add a new adjustment layer I'm going to label this rename and I'll call this invert and now I'll head down to the essentials section and under light we'll go to advanced settings and there's no channel mixer in Luminar but I do have a curve that I can work with so I will take the, the brightest levels and drag them down and the darkest levels and drag them up and now I have an inverted version of this image now if I go back to layers and under blend mode I can select color and that will reverse that layer so between the two of them I get basically an inverted image so you can start to see uh, getting a little bit closer to the colors I'd like somewhat of a blue sky uh, and some colorful foliage although there's a bit of a green tint to everything because we didn't get quite get the white balance that we wanted and, and as a point of comparison let's take a look at uh, dark table this is the same image uh, with a white balance and a, and a swap set in white balance so you're starting to get uh, a bluer sky a little bit of teal still and yellow foliage yellow orange foliage but enough separation that you can work with these and manipulate these in some white clouds and if I take a look at Photoshop you can see uh, this has done a nice job as well I started in Lightroom set a white balance opened in Photoshop uh, did a an inversion still have nice white clouds nice blue sky and colorful foliage and at this point I could start to manipulate and get to some some different colors so back here in Luminar let's see what I can do with this even though I'm not really happy about this green tint I'll start by adding another layer we don't want to mess with uh, the the invert layer we have because it's gonna have that blend color so we'll start by adding a new adjustment layer and from here uh, let's look at the controls I have so I could play with the white balance a little bit 
Um, and that's going to give me, that could take a little bit of those greens out of there. That's not too bad. Uh, let's see. Also down in color, I could go to advanced settings under color. Um, and I can start to uh, mess around with the hue a bit and start to make some adjustments here. But I'm going to jump over to some one of these other tabs. I've got creative uh, that gives you uh, some of the some of the fancier features that Luminar is known for, like uh, the skies and things like that. Then there's a portrait section. We'll skip that. Down in this pro section, uh, I'm going to look at the color enhancer. And down in color enhancer, now I can start to see some different uh, ways to play with colors, color contrast, warmth. Down in advanced settings, this is where I can get a, a color balance control. So now I can affect the color in uh, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So if I wanted to tweak those specifically, so let's say I wanted to go into the shadows and I want to take some of those greens out of the shadows. I can play with that a little bit. There's an improvement. a little bit. Let's go to the highlights. Just these to taste. Okay, so that uh, gives me a little bit better look at the colors. So uh, once you've done that, there's a lot of interesting tools in Luminar. Of course, you've got these presets. A lot of these are designed, of course, for, for regular color photography. You might consider using Luminar as a plug-in uh, to another program. So after you've done your color corrections uh, in your channel swap, say in Photoshop, you could open up an image in Luminar and add some of the interesting effects here. So the Orton effect uh, could be really applicable to infrared photos to add a bit of a glow to the image to sort of uh, give you the appearance of what an uh, infrared film would look like. Uh, so that's one. And then uh, under the, uh, the creative area, you've got a glow that could do a similar effect and a couple different varieties there. So there are some interesting tools in Luminar that you could use to enhance uh, the look of a photo. Um, and, uh, but, but, you know, Maybe, maybe it would be best to consider the, the program to be used as a plug-in so that you're doing your, your basic preparation and manipulation of your infrared photo first somewhere else, but then you open up Luminar to do some enhancements. So uh, Luminar is an interesting program. It's a little slow compared to other programs. If you, if you think Lightroom is slow, <laughs> then, then just try Luminar for a bit, and Lightroom won't seem so slow because it's, it doesn't have quite the caching and the previews uh, that... Um, that Lightroom does. So it's going to be a little bit slower to load your images. So I think I think Luminar is a really good tool for uh, color photography and uh, portrait photography, but but because of this white balance bug, I'm just not so sure that it is um, uh, that it's really ready to deal with uh, some of the needs of uh, of infrared. And using using the the uh, advanced settings, we can swap. Uh, and the layers we can get the uh, a color swap so that part is good but the, but there's a lot of work that would be needed in each individual shot to do color correction once you've done the uh, the, the sort of subpar white balance uh, I still think that other tools such as um, uh, dark table uh, Lightroom Photoshop uh, raw therapy are gonna be provide a better experience for editing infrared so there we go that's a look at uh, Skylum's Luminar 4 uh, and its applicability for editing infrared color photos. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.